today we continue here in the user track with the <coughs> accessibility track and now we have the topic of creating more accessible documents from scans so in this case I have two roles now I'm still the moderator and now I switch my head so <coughs> now I am the <coughs> Fox at Europe person, which is, by the way, my main job, so I'm also the managing director of the PDF Association, but as most of you know, I'm Fox at. But I will do the smaller part, the main part will be done by Armin, who is the CTO of Fox at, and he will mainly show what can be done on scanned documents for accessibility, and this is also, which is hopefully interesting, later in the afternoon, mainly a live session, so Armin will really show different tools, discuss yeah, as much detail as you want or as your questions are and I will just or mainly go a little bit for the introduction and then also that small wrap up at the end. So this is my role, what I want to present and Ami will do the major part <coughs> but we do it together and <coughs> then I can start a little bit. And Ami, yes, and yes, as always each member company can present one slide about their solutions. I hope everybody of you knows Foxit. Basically, we say as a company, we are really a vendor which has a complete PDF offering, so really covering all needs, requirements you may have on PDF applications. So when you're looking for some PDF solutions, technology, then yeah, this is our main pitch, Sync PDF. Think of Foxit, ask us. Obviously, there are a lot of others here which you can ask, but I think we're always worth and hopefully have very often good answers. And for Foxit itself, we have three major solution areas, and you can see it in those blocks. And I can start on the left side, <coughs> which is end user product productivity, or just simply call it the client side. So those are tools which you have on your desktop, on your laptop where you work with PDF and obviously one of the major project pro products is Phantom PDF. So this is a complete PDF editor. Also or think of it as an alternative for Acrobat for example. <coughs> then also similar we have the free Foxit reader which is also a very nice tool to use. I have some special features. I don't know whether maybe we show something later. Huh? No? Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> but there are nice ones like you can see when you're talking now scanned documents like the OCR layer. Or I'm also a great fan of PDF A3. And it's a very simple feature, but I love it. So Foxit Reader will give you a red dot which shows, hey, there's something embedded. So otherwise, if I send something to Nick, I have to tell him, hey, look, there's something embedded in this PDF A file. I just sent you not just simply a PDF. I sent you a PDF A3. And please check what whatever I have embedded there into this file. And then obviously, the mobile PDF solutions. In the middle, we have the server solutions, so for enterprise automation, which covers <coughs> mainly two products. There's a rendition server, a full central platform. There will be a case study or user story tomorrow. We have the PDF compressor, which is also part here of this presentation. And then we have the toolkits, which can do different PDF tasks for you. And then the third block, that's developer solutions. And as the name indicates, mainly for developers. <coughs> so if you have to do anything, you want to write an ERP system, <coughs> you need a small PDF tool to embed watermarks, so down from very simple applications with PDF down to total complete PDF library. And also Foxit is a good candidate to ask. And then there's also the mobile PDF viewer and also an SDK for the mobile PDF solutions. This was a commercial break. And we can move on, please. No. Okay. So now we're coming to the topic and first I want to really to brainwash you so because <coughs> especially some of you have attended the accessibility sessions now we are in the world of scanned documents so we have some scanned paper I don't have it here this is a good one so we really start with a or the user starts with a piece of paper <coughs> and as you know this is and this is what I want to emphasize here this is totally different from <coughs> maybe if you listen to the talk before the break to the born digital world where you obviously can try to start to make it accessible already in the world or 
uh, Dirk was spoken about LibreOffice, so, but that's a totally different world and also the normal reality. If you scan a paper, or typically you can scan 50 or 100 pages of paper, <coughs> it's pretty stupid. So especially from the point of accessibility, so normally the scan is just one image per per page. So you have this one and this is mainly an image. And this means this is zero accessible. So that's a <coughs> the starting point. And the <coughs> yes, very often or the best practice if it's needed, then you really somebody has to sit down. You heard about the tagging or you know about the tagging. Somebody has to sit down and has to manually do the tagging for all those things. And you can easily imagine that this is very <coughs> time and cost intensive. So you really have a lot of processing work to do. And let's say the <coughs> one kind of best practices is that scan service bureaus offer this, but you have really to pay for this. And they call it very often tagging services. And I picked two of our members. So the one is also here, the SRZ, which <coughs> from Berlin. So this is a scan service bureau. If you must have accessible documents from scanned documents, you can give a bunch of paper to them. They will scan the paper for you anyway. That's what a scan service bureau is doing. <coughs> and then if needed and if you're ready to pay for that, then they will also do the tagging for you. And <coughs> also to give an US example, so this is one company which is also a member. It's called Epigen. So if you are from the US, then those are just to give you samples. There are obviously more companies around. But at least in Germany, I know it's not too much. I'm not sure about other countries. Let's go on, Ami, please. So and then that's the main content that we want to show and to present what software can do on the area of accessibility, on the area of yeah, the Americans like to call it auto-tagging. So first I start with a little bit German, if you don't know that. <coughs> but we have a nice word in German and I tried to translate it with my American colleagues and honestly I failed more or less. <coughs> so if you go to, so the Germans say Barriere Arm and <coughs> if you try and that's what you can reach. Uh, that's also what government agencies like to say. We are already Barriere Arm because they are not 100% accessible <coughs> at that point. And we tried some translations, so, but we don't have a good English word. If somebody has one, I'm happy to hear that. So we tried low barrier, but there's Phil, my American colleague here, two question marks in his eyes, so he had no idea what, what I mean with low barrier. <laughs> and I guess it's British English. And the Americans, that's what I understand, like to say it's more accessible. So which basically means it's not 100% accessible. This cannot be reached by software. <laughs> but it's likely it's yeah, as far as software can go. And that's the main point of this presentation, to see what it can be done. So it's not possible to get 100%. Also, by this, it implicitly means there's not immediately a PDF UA file, so conforming to the accessibility standard for scanned documents. And some things you can easily imagine. I picked a very simple example. If you think of software which tries to recognize, and we'll see that software can recognize something, but if there's an image <coughs> on the page, how should the software figure out what, what the alternate tag is? So that's a very easy, a very simple example which can be done. But if you can reach more than 0%, so just remember, if you do it the old way, it's zero. If you do it with some help, with some software, with some <coughs> accessibility auto-tagging, then you can reach more than zero. And if you reach a certain percentage, then it's very obviously that you can save tremendous cost saving. <coughs> and that's what we'll see in a minute. And we also want to say openly, I have heard some skeptics about this, whether this can really work, how good is this. We will see it in a minute if we have the next slide. I mean, then that's where I want to hand over, but just to give you the general flow. So Armin will generate, so he has some scans prepared, then he will generate more accessible documents. Then we will check those with a normal PDF editor, so most of the editors have an accessibility check. And then you have heard or you know it already, then 
Ami will also go very much into detail with a PEG3 checker. And this is one new thing which I, I had before lunch. So there's a real new version of the PEG3 checker, excuse me. And this one is what you want to use anyway. And yeah, then it's time for Armin. Okay. Uh, over and to show us, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Thomas. Okay. Um, as mentioned, I have prepared two or chosen two documents, uh, regular scanned documents for which we will try to do automated tagging. The one is uh, just one newspaper page. Maybe I can zoom out a little. So what you see here is uh, multiple articles, several headlines, all kinds of images, captions, tables and so on. Um, pretty complicated stuff actually, even for manual tagging I think quite a challenge. Um, the second document is slightly more straightforward. It's, um, it's some kind of scientific report on uh, soil quality, whatever. Uh, it contains, also contains multi-column text, as you see here, multi-column or two-column uh, table of contents and some captions, diagrams and, and so on. Um, I must be careful to close this before I start working on it. So now for the easy part. The easy part is just dropping these two into PDF compressor um, or in this case I have dropped the whole folder in here and if you double click here, I hope that's halfway legible, uh, you get the options for this job and the main thing that you have to do is that you have to say, well, I want to generate PDF A 2A or 1A or 3A for that matter where the small a also stands for accessibility and at that point PDF compressor prompts you to also use OCR, text recognition, um, which I've also enabled here already. Both documents are in English, so I guess that's appropriate. And uh, that's basically it. If you choose these two options, PDF compressor behind the scenes will do its best not only to recognize the text and, and insert an invisible text layer into the documents, which makes them full text searchable, which makes them accessible for screen readers, but it will also do its best to um, use structural information created in the course of the OCR process to create the best possible tagging at this point. Enough said, I'll just... Uh, start this job here and in this output folder it will soon give me the two result documents. Uh, of course the one page will be ready a little earlier than the 25 pages and then we'll start with that. That's actually already the part about PDF compressor. The one thing I ought to mention is you don't have to create PDF A 2A or whatever. You can also create straightforward PDF, choose an additional option in, in a dialog to say, well, it's plain PDF, but please give me the tagging anyway. Then you also get the tagging, but of course you don't get the extra flags for accessibility and so on. But we know that uh, requirements sometimes are that way, that you would like to have the tagging, although for some reason you cannot use PDFA. So, if I now go and drop this newspaper page into Foxit Phantom, um, first of all, I see not much. Uh, of course, the tagging does not interfere with the way the, the document is presented in a normal screen reader. It doesn't interfere with printing. It's meta information that you can make visible in Phantom. For example, if you go to this panel here, that's uh, actually for reading order and it now shows an overlay for everything that has been detected as text by the text recognition and I don't know how well you can see that it also shows these little indicators up here in the upper left hand corner of every box indicating what kind of text it is and so here you see a lot of P's where P stands for paragraph um, you'll probably see an F here or there for for figure for an image you see um, several glitches in the OCR here in this image where little bits in the image have been mistaken for character content that's 
quite usual actually with OCR. And for example, you see that this overall title of the newspaper has been ta taken for a header level two, whereas this uh, heading of the main article has been considered as a header level one. Um, as said, it's it's a best our best shot at automatic detection. You also see. Um, a list structure here that corresponds to the uh, reading order. So of course these boxes internally have an order and this order is the, the order in which it, it would be read. So you see that by another colored overlay if I step through that. And so you see the sequence in which a screen reader software would read the contents of this page. And you see at least it first goes to the left column and then works through all of the articles there. And then it starts over here with uh, this top article. And um, of course there is debate, there probably can be debate, for example, whether this author credit here should actually be read after the teaser line for this article good question should it be that way it's set on the page that way but maybe you would want to move it further up which is something you can easily do for example in phantom other editors of course allow for the same but um, you could say this author credit here should go right after the caption and this stuff writer inset as well and in that in that way you can uh, reorder. You can change the uh, reading order here. Okay. Um, other things you can do are here in this accessibility check of Foxit Phantom. Um, so Foxit Phantom offers its own auto tagging. I won't go into de any detail here. It's a similar, it's a related technology, but of course at that point it's manual. You have to open the document in Foxit Phantom first, then have to OCR it manually, then have to choose auto tagging, whereas PDF compressor would give you all of that in, in one go without any uh, further con uh, configuration, without any manual work. But what you can do here, if you say, well, okay, I believe I do have some 80% uh, completeness on on my tagging here but please show me the critical points is you can do a check you can do an accessibility check of course you could also just start the screen reader and see where it gets you but obviously that's a rather cumbersome process to debug the quality of your tagging so let's rather go for the accessibility check and the next thing you see is a dialog with a whole lot of options th so there are several categories in which you can perform this check or you can disable certain checks where you say well I know we have a weak spot there and I don't want to see 25 error messages referring to that but rather let me see the other areas and you must also bear in mind that this accessibility check is geared towards what the Americans call 508 compliance. That is an, a North American standard for accessibility. Fortunately, it's largely congruent with PDF UA, with the demands of PDF UA. But 508 compliance also uh, comprises things such as desktop applications or websites. It therefore uh, deals with things such as animations and color codings, things which are not the subject of PDF UA. Whereas, on the other hand, PDF UA, of course, considers some intricacies of uh, the underlying PDF A standard, so it has a lot to do with document formats. But there is a common ground. It's easy to create a document that is both fully PDF UA compliant and fully 508 compliant. That's something you have to bear in mind. But it's not exactly the same thing. So, fortunately, this check runs rather fast. And again, I hope this is halfway legible. So I have a handful of issues here, which, um, which Phantom reports. And uh, actually, the, the good thing is you do have options to fix all these issues here. And uh, in my trials so far, it 
was of course a bit of manual labor we'll go into some some detail here we will not find the time to fix all the issues and some of them are repetitive but uh, it is quite possible to take this scanned document for example and fix all the issues reported in Foxit and we'll later see using the pack 3 checker that that also uh, provides a good step forward for full PDF UA compliance so that would be a large step in the direction of the 100% on the PDF UA index as mentioned before. So the fix for the primal language is just to specify a language. Uh, I, I even get English suggested here and I'll just choose that and I have one issue less. Um, also the title of the document needs to be more clearly specified. That is something that PDF compressor does not do as of yet. I'll just call it the Indianapolis star so one more issue fixed that was easy okay um, it also warns that the logical reading order and color contrast needs to be okayed manually that is something that this check will also not do automatically I think for obvious reasons um, then we have a few issues with page content here um, one thing arises from the nature of the scanned document. So the image parts that we still have in this scanned document, of course, are images of the entire page. And these have to be treated somewhat differently in, uh, in a tagged PDF. Um, actually, I can call up an explanation here of what to do. And it suggests, for example, mark the content as an artifact in the content panel. Okay, I won't go through the entire help file. I'll just rather show you that this can also be done uh, quite quickly. I have the content panel here. And I see these four images here. And uh, just to get rid of these error messages, I can say crea create artifact. And since it's only four images for this one page, I'll do that. And again, I have a few of the error messages fixed here. If I check the rule again, it shows up as green. And uh, similar thing for, for the tab order that's also a specific that PDF compressor did not do correctly here at that point um, I can fix that here actually under tab order and I say use the document structure as we have it okay so I think that gives you an impression of how you can manually work your way based on the checks in Foxit Phantom through the issues that you have or actually also through all the content that you have. As you've seen, you could step through the reading order and make your own decision. You could change things that have not been, uh, ha not been flagged by the warnings here. Um, and in that fashion, you can Imp further improve your document towards 100% accessibility compliance. So at that point, well, let's, let's have a quick look at the other document as well. It has many more pages, obviously, but of course uh, the check can be run just as quickly here as well. And you'll basically see that we get a similar range of issues. So again, we have the primary language. In this case, the title has actually been set. That's nice. Um, we have the same thing with the tab order, but for so and so many pages now. And uh, we also, of course, have a lot of figures in this document for which alternate text that has been mentioned uh, repeatedly would have to be set. So of course, you can do that as, as well here. You can, you can say, um, fix this and then you get a get a dialog box where you can enter some uh, alternate text and before I do that I have 11 figures to uh, 
to edit and afterwards there are only 10 left i won't do that for all 10 of them right now but again uh, we're quite confident that the gap between a perfectly manually tagged document and the basis provided through our auto tagging can uh, reasonably be closed using Foxit Phantom as a tool and of course there are various other tools that people use for manual tagging but the good thing that you see is if you go to this to this view you see that th all the text which again has been scanned it was an image when we started out all that text has already been captured all those bounding boxes are in place you see they overlap nicely and uh, the the text contents actually correspond to what you're seeing there so that part can really be done automatically so now for the third part of course you may say yeah well we saw Foxit do the one thing and then we saw Foxit uh, check itself and give itself reasonable grades so what how do we stand how we do we actually position ourselves in the world what about an independent um, checker and that would be the pack 3 accessibility checker as we've uh, mentioned before um, I should probably save my changes here in order to benefit from them oh, I can just just use the symbol that the older ones of you may remember as a floppy disk Okay, so the date now says 1545. That doesn't look quite correct. Where did I save it? Ah, the Indie Star, right. Thank you. Okay, so there is this tiny little drop zone here, and actually the accessibility checker runs for a little longer while than uh, Phantom, but um, it now displays this report, and you can click for more details and again you get very similar uh, error messages so again we are lacking alternate descriptions for eight elements here in this newspaper page um, we do have some headings mentioned here that can also directly be seen in uh, Phantom because this element was denoted as a heading level 2 but it's the starting element in the document and both uh, PDF UA and 508 compliance require a proper <laughs> structure of the headings so you cannot start with a heading level 2 you have to start with a heading level 1 and then the headings have, be have to be proper properly nested so what we have with the uh, OCR here actually uh, we do have um, I think a heading level 3 down here which is not okay in terms of the document structure and again I could directly go and fix that no uh, showing contents panels so I have a heading level 4 here and I could go ahead and make it a heading level 2 which I think is appropriate again many nifty details but you see the pack checker is basically on the same page the one thing that we actually really really cannot fix is neither the PDF compressor nor Foxit will actually flag the document as fully PDF UA compliant and really put the PDF UA marker in the document but that's really like the last bit of icing on the cage, cake that's really the cherry on top of it it doesn't make a difference in terms of handling the document and uh, we'll probably get uh, to fix that sooner or later as well um, again if you want to use the PDFA checker we actually use it a lot in our internal processes for uh, for QAing our own work um, you have this view which more or less gives you a graphical representation of the reading order of the way uh, a, read a, a screen reader software would read the sequence of the tags here it's color coded as well so you see figures and then the captions below the figures and so on and you also have this view which is also quite helpful where you see a rendering of your page 
again with the uh, structure. Oh, it takes a while to render the page with the structure of the tags in there. So whatever you uh, let's fix something that can easily be found. Okay, so whatever you select here gets highlighted in this screen reader view as well. So as affordable as Foxit Phantom is at that point and as uh, comprehensive its tagging features and functionality is already, if you want to stick to a multi-platform, uh, freely available, publicly supported tool, this will al also help you a great deal in determining actually the structure and the quality of the tagging that has be been created. And uh, so we can all only just uh, prompt you, everyone that has an interest in this field, uh, get, a, get a, a demo version of PDF compressor, run it on your documents with the options provided and uh, check the quality of the output in this pack 3 reader and then you may have a starting point for your decision where to go with automated tagging. Yeah. Okay, Questions? Thank you, uh. thank you. We are not done yet, but it's a good point if you have questions for the live part and I think we should do it now. So when Michael Um, again, the, the slight difference also arises from the focus of the Foxit product on 508 compliance and the, uh, the uh, pack checker on PDF UA compliance. So the pack checker will sell, say, well, you don't have the entry for PDF UA in your document. The Foxit product will not, will not mention this. But uh, in terms of the actual pragmatically important things such as is this image properly positioned? Does it have alternate text? Uh, is the reading order correct? And, and things like that, they should pretty well match. And of course, um, for the German market with its focus on PDF-A and PDF-UA for accessibility, the pack checker would probably be, as uh, mentioned by Markus Erle as well, would probably be the tool of choice, the actual benchmark. But uh, in terms of trying to find the hotspots where you need to fix something, a Foxit Phantom does a really good job as well. Plus, it, in most cases, it directly gives you a context menu where you can go and fix the thing that has been flagged. So I'm, I'm a stupid guy here. So <coughs> the PAX 3 checker goes very detailed. If I see those error messages not being an accessibility expert, I get lost. And that's why we showed Phantom as, let's say, as a medium level, which is a little bit more user understandable. So correct me, but I think the puck checker can go much more into the details of the accessibility mm. things. No, no, no. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> really, the Fox and Phantom goes to more or less the same level of detail, yeah. but it gives you a more hands on approach as to how to fix the things. We are looking at a similar situation here because we have these issues, for example, of reading order. We have certain rules that are rather strict and we encounter real world documents that simply don't adhere to those rules. Okay, so you have a document where just the way it is written, headings of the third level follow headings of the first level. What do you do if you need a level two heading in between? You can insert a dummy there you could promote all the heading three levels to heading two just to conform to the to the requirements of PDF UA. I think there will be discussions in the future to come just as we have them with the PDF A validation. But uh, as with PDF A validation, there will be a common ground and it is already pretty big, as I think you can see here, where people agree this is properly accessible. Uh, but again, around the borders, there will be discussions, there will always be detail uh, conflicts and they will have to be resolved one by one. Yes. If there 
there's a headline two missing, those uh, checkers will say it's missing. Here. So there's no big disagreement in that sense. Right? Uh, the approach is different. By the way, with this rule set, coming from WCAG, and uh, uh, in this case, PDFQA has the 130 something rules, 108 of them being machine checkable. We don't go to that extent. Mm -hmm. And you you really have to ha have to um, bear in mind if if both sets of requirements apply to you or if you want to satisfy both, it's not difficult to create a document that's both 508 compliant and PDF UA compliant. It's it's you don't have to have two versions of the same document just to conform to those two standards. Uh, was another question? You have good eyes. <laughs> That's I've right. The they, they are <laughs> they are missed by the OCR. You got me, th or you got us there. That's actually really what happens. Um, you you mean right right here, right? Ah, yeah, yeah, right. Yes, you mean this here. Yes, that is something that for reasons unknown to, my, to me, the OCR has missed. That yes, yes, the tagging of the table is definitely not optimal here. And uh, of course, it should differ, discriminate between table headings and table fields. And uh, that would also definitely be something that uh, a manual approach should fix. So some manual operator should go and erase the tags that we have here already and properly tag the contents that are there.